Welcome back to another module of NPTEL MOOC's course on microwave integrated circuits. In the previous module, we had covered the concept of reflection coefficient and BSWR. In this module, we are going to cover another important aspect of microwave engineering, which is known as the Smith chart. As we had discussed in the previous module, uh, that as we move away from the load, we traverse a clockwise rotation along a constant radius circle. So, the concept of Smith chart arises from this uh, interesting phenomenon that we see in transmission line. That as we move away or towards the load, the magnitude of the reflection coefficient remains constant and the phasor keeps on changing. Now, the Smith chart is what we call the bilinear transformation of the impedance from the z plane to the gamma plane. As you can see, this formula, even though I am saying it is a bilinear transformation, this formula is analogous to the formula for the reflection coefficient. So, a Smith chart is nothing but conversion of z impedances to reflection coefficient. Now, usually, uh, even though gamma is given, the transformation is given like this, it is more convenient to express this transformation like this. Now, z upon z0, I call this the normalized impedance and represent it by the small z. So, then gamma is equal to small z minus 1 upon small z plus 1. And if I plot these constant resistance lines represented by these red lines and these green lines are representing what I am calling constant reactance lines. If for these lines I do this transformation, then these red and green lines are transformed to these lines, these circles, these, these red and these green circles. Now, these green dotted lines are actually portions of circles. Now, for z for say x equal to 1, small x equal to 1, I get a circle like this. For small x equal to 0 0.5, I get a circle like this. So, this circle is converted to this, so I beg your pardon, this straight line is converted to this circle. This constant reactance straight line is converted to this constant reactance circle. This constant resistance straight line is converted to this constant react resistance circle. So, it is kind of like a conversion from uh, straight lines to circles. But the another advantage is that the entire right half of the z plane that is those values of z for which small r is greater than 0 is now enclosed within this circle having a radius 1. So, in other words, all passive impedances are now concentrated within this circle and I can visualize all these impedances in a small space. Outside this biggest circle, by biggest circle I mean the circle having radius 1, the real part of the impedances will be negative and that corresponds to active devices. So, this is a more elaborate view of the transformation. As I said, these green lines which are confined within the circle having radius 1, they are actually portions of cir bigger circles. And as you can see, uh, impedance having constant re resistance of negative 0.5 will be this large circle, which is outside that unit circle. So, this is once again summarizing what I was saying. All passive devices having gamma L that is the reflection coefficient equal to or lesser than 1 will be confined within this unit circle. Whereas, all active devices having reflection coefficient greater than 1 will be outside this unit circle. Now, let us see the implication of this. Suppose, we have a lumped element inductor 
then at frequency omega equal to 0 the reactance will be 0 as the frequency increases we will be moving along this constant resistance circle this constant resistance circle has a radius of unity and we shall be moving along the circumference of this constant resistance circle till we come to this point where omega is infinity. So, in other words the left hand portion of this Smith chart corresponds to a short and the right hand portion corresponds to an open. <coughs> Similarly, if we uh, if we consider a capacitance then for omega equal to 0 it will be infinite impedance reactance and for omega equal to infinity the reactance will be 0. So, we are moving along this constant resistance circle this unit circle along the lower half. So, for inductance we move from as the frequency goes from 0 to infinity we move from the left to the right along the top hand portion for the capacitance we move from the right to the left along the bottom half. Again just like for the inductance this portion for the capacitance this part is the short <coughs> this part is the open <coughs> excuse me please. Now analogous to a Z Smith chart you know the previous Smith charts that we considered were based on the bilinear transformation of Z and we can have a similar Smith chart based on the bilinear transformation of Y. Now, as we can see that the Y Smith chart and Z Smith chart the same point on the two Smith charts will be or the same impedance on the two Smith charts will be rotated by 180 degree by virtue of the presence of this negative sign. So, if suppose this is our uh, if suppose this is our normal Smith chart um, then we saw that for a normal Smith chart uh, the far end was short and the near end was open. In this Y Smith chart this far end will be open and the near end short and you can also rotate the Y Smith chart so that this part becomes open and this part becomes so, this is in summary what we observe the Y Smith chart is obtained by inverting the Z Smith chart. In the rotated Y Smith chart the short and open positions are explained. So, once again for the Z Smith chart we saw that the far end is the short the near end is the open for the Y Smith chart the far end is open near end is short. Now, one thing that we note is that if the Z Smith chart is 180 degree rotated with respect to the Y Smith chart then we might combine the two and form what is called a Z Y Smith chart where a point with respect to the Z Smith chart will also satisfy the position requirement for the Y Smith chart. Now, Smith charts are commercially available uh, they can be downloaded from the internet. Uh, one interesting application of a Smith chart is uh, to read impedances and impedance transformation. What you have on a real Smith chart is a figure like this with small markings. <coughs> the various uh, lines have their own reactances normalized reactances value and the central line has many markings corresponding to the normalized resistance. Now, if you want to find out the DSWR of a load which has a reflection coefficient gamma and which is plotted on the Smith chart like this then there is a simple way to find out the DSWR directly. What you do is you draw a circle from that point which intersects this x axis at a certain point Then the reading on the x axis the reading not the length or the distance the actual reading on the Smith chart will be the VSWR for this particular impedance. That brings us to an end to module uh, module 4 of week 1. <coughs>